Built by the bands for the fans of Front of Rock Radio. We just heard uh, Speaker Eater Sovereigns. Before that, White Witch Canyon, Four Star Heretic, Junior Bruce with the Headless King, and Woe Fat Enter the Riffian. Uh, speaking to Speaker Eater, I am joined by Matt and Tom right now. How are you guys doing? Good. Hey, man, we're doing good. How are you doing? I'm doing excellent. Welcome back to the lair. Yeah, we're happy to be back. I'm excited to talk about more stuff with you. It's always a great time. I think, being on here. I think you guys are officially the uh, the most frequently visiting around here. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you. Uh, so, why don't we get into it? Uh, since the last time we talked, uh, you were talking about working on this album, and now it sounds like you're uh, really close to releasing it. Definitely, yeah. It's almost done. It's been a long time in the making, considering it was recorded the same time as our last EP, but... Yeah, it is it is complete. We're working on the packaging for it now, so it's pretty exciting. Yeah, like really, like almost a year ago, like almost this month, I think we started recording this album and yeah. kind of spread things out and did a little bit of other work uh, all throughout the year, and it's finally all kind of coming together, and we're just ready to, to get it packaged and then start getting them out to people, so... So I know, like, the last album you did um, all the packaging and everything yourself, and you really put a lot of time and effort and stuff into it you got anything neat like that going on this time um not it's not quite as personal but we're still doing trying to do everything ourselves we're having uh tim from orwell he uh designed the cover for our album and we're screen printing it with him so it's still going to be all done ourselves and the design work even he's a good friend of ours so it's still similar to what we did before but just uh, a little higher quality i would say yeah, I think it's like great, like you know, that we're able to maybe make give that little more professional edge, but still keep it within the realm of people that we like interact with and like really respect and our friends. 
So that's cool, and like especially to be involved with the whole screen printing thing is something new for us, and something that we've always kind of wanted to do with our album, but just weren't able to do on our own the first time around. Cool. Uh, so we just listened to, I'm sorry, Sovereigns, and that's the first track off the new album. Yep. Uh, what can you tell us about that? Um, I would say that uh, that one was, you know, I guess has the the piano intro, which I feel like was really the the first time I kind of considered before the fact of like kind of having piano in the song, and uh, I just feel like it's a really nice quiet intro, kind of eerie, and then it just really crushes, which uh, kind of sets the, the pace for the rest of the record. I feel like. Cool. Uh... I guess we talked a little bit last time about this as uh, kind of a progression off of off of the last album. Do, do you feel like you've uh, accomplished everything that you set out to? Having a, I know you started recording both these at the same time. Yeah, well, and it's it's kind of interesting because the the progression came like so long ago, really, when we were writing the songs. We've been playing them all live for so long, but they're still they still are very separate and. We kind of like that they're on two separate releases and that we didn't release them all at once because of how different the writing styles are. You know, the other thing with that, too, I mean, I think it, it's a little different than from how most bands put out music, but the fact that, you know, within a year of each other that we're putting out two EPs, kind of keeping, you know, f- fresh music for people to listen to, and I think that's a good thing to let people know that, hey, we're still, like, always trying to put stuff out and do new things. Yeah, keep people interested. And like on top of our last record, Lords had a, a separate session that we kind of just went up you know, to record in Washburn with the music already done and just kind of did, you know, touch up things or like auxiliary with the piano, like some acoustic guitar, some bells and things that were after the fact that we, I think, just make the album a little bit better than it could have been without. So with that in mind that you keep... Uh putting things together or trying to uh, keep current and releasing things. Now that you have these two EPs under your belt, are you guys working on writing new stuff at this point already? Yeah, we have we have a few songs that we actually are already playing live that are new that we don't have recorded that we know we really want to get down eventually, but it's uh, we're still definitely currently in the mode to get just practiced for our tour, so the we haven't really been writing too much, but it, we definitely haven't stopped, so... Yeah, it's like our long, like not maybe too long term, but definitely I feel like we all kind of share the same goals for this next year. Like, I guess first importantly, it's important to make it back from tour, but after that, <laughs> I think that we want to have another release that we do with uh, Ryan up in Washburn. And I wouldn't say it would be a full length, but it's definitely going to be lengthier than probably both of our EPs put together. So, and we'll have to kind of see. There's still some songs like Tom mentioned that are done, and probably some more still that aren't done yet. So. There's definitely still a lot more to do. How would, uh, do you feel like your sound's progressing on the the new stuff then that you're putting together now? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I feel like when we first set out, and I feel like it's pretty apparent in the music from you know, say like Hellship to like one of our newer songs, even just the use of like my guitar pedals, and you know, initially it was just you know just distortion, and, and like now I'm using a lot of delays and really kind of after playing this music for so long, kind of coming up with a guitar rig that really complements what I'm doing on the guitar. So, and that's just me personally. I don't know if you've, yeah. you have to add to that. And yeah, definitely. I mean, through playing these songs for so long, like I think, well, all of us have just become better instrumentalists. Definitely. And our songwriting, I think, reflects that. So I think just not to say that we dislike our earlier songs, but I think our we all just like our newer songs better because it's more of like what we have done with our instruments so far. So. It's kind of more where we're at now, you know, versus what we because like you know, Hellship that was probably almost two years ago that that song was written. I feel like yeah. maybe not quite, but a long time ago. And we're definitely like he said, we're all you know we've really all progressed as musicians since then. How about as far as, uh, like we've talked before, your songs kind of getting longer and, you know, the early stuff was a little bit more uh, quicker songs, a little more hardcore, mm-hmm. and the, the stuff that you've been uh, playing out recently, a little bit longer songs, a little bit more of a groove and stuff going on. Do you see yourselves continuing down that path? Yeah, it seems to, we seem to be kind of sticking to 
pretty much all of our newer songs are longer, and um, I think it's we're becoming more comfortable with writing longer songs. And before we were trying to keep things really short and really um, just kind of to the point, and now we're kind of progressing a little bit further from that. Yeah, I feel like when we first started, there was you know maybe it wasn't super apparent, but there was certain things that we were aiming for Speaker Eater to be, and kind of Speaker Eater just became what it is now, and we were not really trying to define it as anything. We're just kind of doing what we like to do, and that happens to be, like you said, the little longer songs, a little more complex writing, a little more of a groove in it. So we're just kind of doing, you know, whatever whatever we feel like doing. Cool. Uh, how about we take a listen to another song here? Yeah, uh, I think you're going to play a, a Lord of Hunger next, which is the one that you played before, but this is the finally the, the mastered, finished finished version. All right, sounds great. Let's take a listen. And we're back. Uh, so let's talk about this tour you're headed out on. Uh, when are you guys heading out and where are you guys going? Uh, the first date is uh, the 9th of August. It's a Thursday in Minneapolis. It's at the Treehouse House, which I think is a, just a house show. But uh, it's actually going to be kind of nice to have that be our first date just because we have some friends there. So kind of be a good like kickoff show. And then we're headed to Fargo, Missoula, Montana, Seattle, Washington, Portland, Oregon, Oakland, California, Los Angeles, California, Las Vegas, Nevada, Salt Lake City, Utah, and Denver, Colorado. So ten shows in ten days. Yeah, and all those shows are with Orwell. So and they, you know we're going along with them, which is really cool. I think we both really like those guys. They've been real cool to us. So it's good to to have some friends along for the truck with us. Got any? Uh, are there any city or uh, venue or band that you're supposed to be playing with along the way that you're uh, really looking forward to, or you know, something that you're like, "Wow, I didn't think we'd get to do that." Well, as far as bands actually mentioning that, it's kind of cool because there's none that I like knew or like was 
really excited to play with, but I'm almost mo more excited to meet some other like local bands and things like that. Uh, as far as venues, the place we're playing in Las Vegas was on the show Drive or Diners Dive Drive-ins and Dives on and Food, Food Network. Network. So apparently they have a uh, good food, pretty good draw, yeah, and really good food. So that's probably the most excited I am as far as venues go. Yeah, I'm really excited to play the the New Direction in Fargo. We're playing actually with Northless on that show. And uh, that's like Rusty from, you know, he used to be in Battlefield. So that should be have a pretty good, I'm thinking, a pretty good job for the kind of music we play. Nice. So I'm really excited to play there. And we have some friends down in Denver, which is cool when you kind of like post your dates up and you see friends that you haven't really connected with in a while. Like, hey, we're coming to your show in Denver. Yeah. So like pretty excited to like, kind of have a last night with some friends from Wassa down in Denver. Well, that is kind of nice for the last day of your tour, at least. Uh, yeah, and I guess after, on the be. 19th, we're coming back. We're playing in Dubuque, Iowa, the off minor, but that is not with Orwell. We're just trying to hit another show on the way back to, to Wisconsin. So Get some gas money along the way. Anything yeah. helps, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's with well, friends, too, so, I mean... Yeah, definitely. That'll just be a fun show. Yeah, they yeah. took care of us really well down there last time, so we're definitely have yeah. no problems going back. It should be fun. Who are you guys playing down there with uh, this time in uh, Dubuque? Oh, I know one band is Wax Moth, which is um, one of the Seath side projects yeah, with uh, right. Ryan. But I don't know actually the other local band. I just saw yesterday that the event came up, so I didn't actually check that all out yet. But like again, like with, with what Tom was saying before, it's a, I know it's a band I've not heard of, so always excited to like you know, hear other bands that are just kind of doing what we're doing, staying local, just playing music, so. Excellent. Excellent. Uh, and uh, you were saying that you've got, uh, you know, up until recently you've had, like, some stickers, some buttons, and then uh, your first EP, but you're uh, working on putting together a bunch of merch for this tour as well. So. Yeah, we have, uh, for the first time, we'll have T-shirts in two different designs, so we're pretty excited about that. One of them I, Thomas, designed, and then the other one, and you can kind of see that design in a different variation on our Facebook, but the other one, Tim Bradley from Orwell, also designed, and uh, they're both, we're pretty excited to get them on a t-shirt, hopefully get some posters of both of them too, so. Yeah, the one shirt I would say is more of like an album, you know, Lord's shirt, but the other one is something that yeah, we've been really wanting to do for a long time, and. Um, yeah, we got a good hookup with doing, uh, we're doing a few different color shirts, um, nice Gildan soft style tees, so excited to keep them like good quality shirts, and yeah, just have that for the first time is really exciting. We've been getting asked about that for a long time, so. Yeah. And then, yeah, we have some new stickers we're doing again, you know, trying to focus a lot on the release of Lords. It will be a Lords, you know, a cover sticker, and then we kind of reordered some old buttons and like really just excited to, to have a full... Stock. array of stuff to, to give people to hook yeah, them up. stocking up on things to spread around the country <laughs> so yeah so, so EP is e coming out when? when when can you when get it physically <laughs> and uh, I think you said you might have a different release date for the band camp yeah actually it's going to be able to be streamed this Friday which is uh, I mean it will be August 3rd this Friday and it will be able to be streamed on our band camp Physical copies should be available, will, will be available on our tour. And um, after that, I feel like when we get back from tour, or when we leave, I guess it's not for sure finalized yet, but you will be able to purchase it on Bandcamp. Or if you're not in Wausau, you can uh, order a copy from us, physical copy, when we get back, and we'll mail those out to whoever wants those. So yeah, August August 3rd, though, you can listen to it in its entirety, so... Excellent, and that's just uh, speakreader.bandcamp, is that right? Yeah, speakreader.bandcamp.com, and then also, I guess, with throwing out links, we all are, we do also have a website now, which is uh, just speakereater.com, so if you can remember that, you can obviously uh, see our dates and get to our music easily from there, too. Awesome, when awesome. did that come about? Yeah. Um, that, that was, again, Tim from Orwell really helping us out, uh, you know, getting ready for tour, and we uh, you just kind of, like, set up a real simple website for us, but I think it kind of goes with the style that we aim for, just kind of, yeah. you know, get the important things out there that we like to people to know about us and keep it pretty clean and straight to the point, so, but, yeah, that's pretty exciting to kind of have that official link now to give out to people. Nice, so nice. the speakerreader.com, the band camp, I imagine you've got, uh, well, of course, you have the Facebook. Yep. yep. 
Yeah, yeah. there's links to pretty much everything there. And yeah, from our site. I have a few things that we would update, some information that you won't be able to find anywhere else specifically, so hopefully more people will start checking that out. Yeah, and we're really excited, I guess, just for like even the next couple of weeks, we should be doing a lot of work getting ready for the tours still. But yeah, check back on that website a lot. We're going to be posting pictures of us doing the screen printing and like getting all the packaging ready. So yeah. some really hands-on stuff for you guys to see. Awesome. awesome. Well, uh, thank you guys very much for uh, joining me today. Oh, anytime, man. Yeah, thank not, you. Thank you. Yeah, very much. We always like to be on here. It's always just a nice, uh, nice to have a conversation with you about you know things that we all like. So yeah, we always yeah. love to come back. And uh, on behalf of the station and everybody, we'd like to uh, thank you guys also for uh, playing the festival this year again. We appreciate you guys doing it last year, and we really appreciate appreciate you guys coming down and doing it again this year. Oh, of course. Yeah, it was a blast last year, and it sounds like it's going to be even more fun this year. So we're looking forward to it. Yeah, it was a no-brainer. Yeah, we, we, we were, like, so pumped to do it, especially as, like, I keep seeing, you know, the lineup getting better and better. Yeah, so. I'm, I'm more excited to just to watch all the other bands play than for <laughs> us to play. So, But, yeah, it'll be a lot of fun, especially between the two days. It'll be, like, just a party weekend, really, not just one night. So, Awesome. Uh, anything else you want to get out there quick? Nope, just I would say, like I said, keep following us on uh, speakreader.com and listen to our new stuff this Friday, and hopefully, you you know, for listeners out there, they can maybe come see us on our tour, so... Sounds great. I'll uh, I'll post the dates up on the blog. If you guys got a poster, send it to me, and I'll uh, get that up there as well. Cool. And, All right, we'll uh, do that, man. I've Thank got, you very much. You bet. I've got one more song uh, from your new EP. This is Hive Mind. What would you like to say about this before we play it? Oh. Well, this is uh, the last track off our new new EP, Lords, and I don't know. I guess just let it speak for itself. I feel like yeah, yeah. It's it's. A, I feel it's a pretty proper ending at the end, and I hope people. You know, make some, I guess, want to hear more in the future. So, all right, thank you very much. Uh, this is Hive Mind from Speaker Reader. Crank it up.
Okay. One second.